So now we're going to go into the postural and movements assessments. And this section is going to be very, very highly testable. So you have to pay attention from here till the end of the chapter, as you will see multiple questions from this section on the exam. And the way that they're going to ask the questions may not be what you think. You may think that you have to memorize how to administer, let's say, an overhead squat test. But that's not exactly how they're going to test you. You're essentially going to learn the tests and the deviations that you see based on poor posture or poor form. When they show you those deviations, they will then explain to you which muscles are overactive that causes this deviation and also which muscles are underactive that cause this deviation. So the overactive muscles need to be stretched because they're essentially working too hard. The underactive muscles that you're being overpowered need to be strengthened. So you may be asked questions in a multitude of ways. So for instance, you may be asked, all right, a client is exhibiting arms falling forward on an overhead squat exam. Which muscles needs to be stretched? So they're essentially asking you, what are the overactive muscles on an overhead squat with arms falling forward? And the overactive muscles are going to be the latissimus dorsi, teres major, and the um, pectoralis major, the chest muscles. Now, this does sound intimidating, but you have to understand that there will be a fair amount of overlap with a lot of the tests and a lot of the deviations that you see. So I'll help you to identify the patterns so that you won't have to memorize each deviation for each different exercise or test, you'll be able to group them together and then it'll be much easier for you to do well on the exam. Let's first start off with a postural assessment, all right? What should you look like? I'm including a front view and a lateral view. And the checkpoints for proper posture will be from the front view, feet straight and parallel, the knees will be in line with the toes, the lumbo-pelvic hip complex, which is the middle line, will be leveled in the front and the back. The shoulders will not be rounded or tilted, and the head is gonna be neutral, all right? Now, from the side view, your feet are in neutral position, your legs are at a right angle to the feet, and the knees are not flexed or turned out. So the first deviation that we're gonna go over is pronation distortion syndrome. Now, that's characterized by flat feet and knees internally rotating. So when we're looking at the muscles that cause this, the short muscles are the ones that need to be stretched out. They're the overactive muscles. And they're gonna be the calf, the gastrocnemius, the soleus, the peroneals, the adductors, the inner thighs, the IT band, the hip flexors, and the bicep femoris, all right? Now, now the weak muscles or the underactive muscles that need to be strengthened are gonna be the anterior tibialis, the front of the lower leg, the posterior tibialis, the back of the lower leg bone, the vastus medialis, the inside of the upper thigh, the gluteus, the butt, and the hip external rotators. And the external rotators should really pop out at you because if the knees are internally rotating, obviously the external rotators are not working hard enough. So what does this cause? This causes increased knee adduction, not abduction, because remember, Adduction brings you in, abduction takes you away. Foot pronation, uh, external foot rotation, and knee internal rotation. Ankle dorsiflexion and ankle inversion. As you can see that the ankles come up and in. So that will jump out. You have to memorize the picture for pronation distortion syndrome. Now the second postural deviation is gonna be lower cross syndrome. Now this is going to be characterized by an anterior pelvic tilt or essentially sticking your butt out. So, the short muscles, the muscles that need stretching, the muscles that are working too hard, are again, just like the pronation distortion syndrome, are going to be the gastrocnemius, the soleus, so it's gonna be the calf, it's going to be the hip flexor complex, the inner thighs or the adductors, the latissimus dorsi, and the erector spinae. So, the latissimus dorsi and the erector spinae should jump out at you because those are back muscles. Every muscle that essentially occurs in the back, like the calves, are going to be tight because the back is tighter and the front is essentially being pulled in, as you can see. So the muscles that are lengthened and need strengthening are going to be the anterior tibialis, the front of the lower leg, the posterior tibialis, the buttocks, the transverse abdominis, 
and the oblique. So the abs, obviously, the transverse abdominis is an ab muscle. The internal oblique is going to be an ab muscle. They're in the front. They're being stretched out. They're being lengthened, so they need to be strengthened to pull the bottom line of the lumbopelvic hip complex to a level. So what do we see here? We see increased lumbar extension, so the lower back is extra curved, and decreased hip extension. The third deviation is going to be the upper cross syndrome, and that's going to be characterized by a forward head and rounded shoulders. All right, so you can see this person is leaning forward. So the muscles that are going to need stretching for the upper cross syndrome is going to be the upper trapezius, the levator scapula, the sternocleidomastoid, which if you remember during the cardiorespiratory chapter, helps us to inhale. And remember, the scalenes and sternocleidomastoid are of the same group, so they'll always come together. The latissimus dorsi, the teres major, the subscapularis, and the pectoralis major, the chest. These are the muscles that are overactive that needs to be stretched out. Now, the underactive muscles or the ones that need strengthening or the lengthened muscles are going to be the deep cervical flexors, the serratus anterior, the rhomboids, the traps, both mid and lower, the teres minor, and the infraspinatus. All right, so these are the muscles that need to be strengthened. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing increased cervical extension. And if you studied your joint motions in the previous chapter, you remember what cervical extension is. Increased scapular protraction. So remember the difference between protraction and retraction. This person is leaning forward and has decreased shoulder extension and decreased shoulder external rotation. So obviously the shoulder is coming inward, so there's decreased shoulder external rotation. So you essentially just have to memorize these tables. You're gonna to have to look at these parts of the body. It may help if you look up each muscle and you'll see that they're all kind of in the same area and that's why you have that exaggeration. So make sure to memorize these and then we'll go into dynamic posture assessments.